Let's see what's going on here. The big man with going? me. You what? Hola español. ¿Qué le pasó? God, I love, God, I love it when he speaks Spanish. Spanish. One of my favorite parts of having Sheriff Lamb with me is that I have a built-in interpreter. Um, his family spent a bunch of time in Panama when he was younger. Um, he did a church mission in Argentina. So he is, his, his Spanish is awesome. And I, I love having him with me because I, when I run into someone and there's a language barrier because I don't speak like he does, um, I have him there and he, it just, it immediately breaks down walls and people are so comfortable with him because, um, cause his dialect is great and his, his knowledge of the culture is great. And it, it just, it makes him a great partner. I wish I had him with me all the time. Okay. Okay. He's got a tow truck on the way already. His engine blew and he's got ass, uh, oil coming out from the boat. Oh. So, bueno, bueno, gracias. Que lo pase bien. He's so awesome. So, Frank, we're back together. The last time we were together was for, I think most people don't realize, our April Fool's Day video. This isn't the first time that Sheriff Lamb's been with me. Uh, we did episode 20. was the first time that I had him in my passenger seat. Uh, we did the April Fool's joke. And uh, so that was another time that I got him with me. And then this is 68. So um, I, I, I love having him with me. I wish I, I got to spend more time with him. Uh, but having him out there is, is it's awesome. And we, and we always have fun. We always have great conversations. And it gives me a little bit of insight into what he sees for the future of the agency. So it, it's just fun. Where we eluded we did not say, we alluded to the fact that you could potentially retire. And I'm still on, so <laughs> still I on. retire. All right, folks, that's the biggest thing. First thing I want you to know in this video, Frank's not retiring. That was an April Fool's Day joke. My time, time serving the citizens isn't over yet. Well, we appreciate that. Now, you're out here every day. What is some of the major, you know, you know my pet peeve, driving in the left lane, I do. in the left lane. What are some of here in this area where you work what are some of the most um, concerning driving behaviors you're seeing right now? Um, well, speed. I'm from New York. I'm Italian. I talk with my hands. Um, in the comments to this, all the time, I see, oh, you have to keep your hands on the wheel. There is no requirement in Arizona law that says you have to drive with two hands on the wheel. Is it safer? Very well possibly, yes. But if I'm driving and I take my hand off the wheel for a second to, because it's the way I talk, and then I go back and grab the wheel. There's not a violation. It's not required. I've never stopped someone for it. I've never even talked to anyone about that ever in the history of forever. Talk about, hey, you have to have two hands on your wheel. So stop saying that. You sound ridiculous. Speed is, is probably the biggest. Um, it's, it's, a major, um, it's a major factor in, in serious injury collisions. Um, the faster cars go, the more energy is involved in the collision sequence, the worse the injuries are. So we got a hands-free law now here in Arizona. Um, basically, you're not supposed to be manipulating anything. It's not just talking on the phone. It's not chatting. It's not scrolling Facebook. I've had people that have said, look, I wasn't talking on the phone. I was on Facebook. <laughs> yep. It's a... You, it's a distracted driver law, right? Are you seeing a reduction in that, or are people still using their phones? People are still doing it. They're still using their phones every day. You can't manipulate your phone at all. So it's using it for navigation, looking at TikTok, you know, checking emails. It's not just, like you said, it's not just talking or texting. Watching Fridays with um, Frank. And it's, it's a really common violation. Um, I think it's, it's a catalyst of a lot of rear-end collisions. Absolutely. Because we've been doing Fridays with Frank, and some of the other crazy stuff we've done. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know, for Facebook followers across this country, there is, number one is uh, the FBI, which obviously we know they have an inside track now. Uh, number two is NYPD. Not anymore. And number three, believe it or not, is the... And now can I share something? As of when this video was recorded, we were number three uh, as far as followers on Facebook. Well, now we're number two. So we eclipsed NYPD, and right now the Pinal County Sheriff's Office is the number two most followed 
uh, law enforcement agency on Facebook. The FBI is number one. Um, the Public Information Office from Pinal County Sheriff's Office actually teaches at the National Academy uh, for the FBI, so it, which is captains and chiefs and uh, sheriffs and you know, all the, the higher ranking officials from departments will send their personnel to the FBI to learn how to be better. And PIOs, the Public Information Office from the Pinal County Sheriff's Office actually teach the portion on social media because because um, they've dominated so much between what they've done with Fridays with Frank and with Sheriff Lamb and uh, the guys from Search and Rescue or Anti Smuggling Unit, just um, how they've showcased the Pinal County Sheriff's Office um, and brought us all the way up to number two. So um, so it's it's a pretty big deal even on a national level. The FBI has recognized that um, PCSO is doing it right. Pinal County Sheriff's Office. People are telling me that they um, that they know that I'm out here and that they have changed their driving behavior all the time um, because they know that the Pinal County Sheriff's Office traffic unit is out here. Now that uh, you're it's not just me, it's every, the whole you unit. Know who you are? Do you find it harder to do traffic stops? No, no. People, people still they blow my doors off. All the job security every in the world. Single day. And then when you pull them over, they're probably like, hey, Frank, I knew that was probably you. All the time, I get, I get, I have conversations at the side of vehicles all the time where, man, I thought that was you. I'm like, well, maybe you should slow down, should a, little slow down bit, a little bit. You're at, you know, 20 miles an hour over the speed limit, weaving through traffic. So, you know, everywhere I go, people will say, well, did you bring Frank with you? Did you bring Frank with you? I even joke now that I'm no longer Sheriff Lamb, I'm Frank's boss now, but, uh, <laughs> you I love know, that. And I, but people love it. Wherever we go, they love. And it, what matters most to me is what law enforcement thinks about what we do. I just got back uh, from some time out of town. I spent some time in Florida. And while I was there, I was all over the state of Florida. I met, I met deputies and, and sheriffs from Marion County, from Polk County, from Lee County, from uh, Coral Springs Police Department. I was all over there. And uh, I, I got recognized all over the state of Florida. So just like the sheriff says, hey, um, you know, he, he gets asked about me. Um, I, was in a, I was in a barber shop in Ybor City uh, outside of Tampa, and the guy that was cutting my hair recognized me. Um, just from in there, you know, I'm, I'm not wearing Fridays of Frank hat and shirt, um, but he, he recognized me, asked me if I was a cop, asked me if I was from Arizona, asked me if I was the guy on TikTok. Um, so it's, it's pretty fun. Uh, all the stuff that I got to do. Did an awesome ride along with Coral Springs Police Department, their traffic unit. Uh, Officer Charney, super cool dude. We got to spend some time together. Uh, went over, had a great walk around of Lee County Sheriff's Office. That's a, a real big sheriff's office down there. Uh, got to meet Sheriff Grady Judd, which is one of the highlights of my trip. Uh, that guy's a legend in Polk County. Uh, met Sheriff Billy Woods up in Marion County, which is by Ocala. Uh, he is running a, running a great sheriff's office there. Uh, they do a lot of great stuff. So it's, I was all over Florida and uh, to the state of Florida, thank you so much. And I will tell you the feedback I get from law enforcement across this country is always positive. I've had people reach out to me uh, looking for a, a proactive law enforcement agency to work for because they want to be cops. You know, they, they want to go out and enforce the law. They want to have an admin that supports them. They want to serve a community that equally supports them as much as we support them. That's in Pinal uh, County? You know, the community and, um, and all of that comes together in Pinal County. It's been a great hiring tool, getting people out here to come work for us. So I, th I think we're going to keep doing this. I, I found the same thing. Um, I just got back. We, I had back-to-back -back traffic safety conferences, um, one in Phoenix and one in California. That was a national um, conference, and I, I had the same. I had the same conversations with law enforcement about our representation as an agency um, of law enforcement on the national platform. Um, I've had multiple people inquire about working lateraling from from other agencies to Pinal County, and it puts Pinal County on the map. Oh yeah. There. Hiring's better. People want no, to come so to Sheriff here. Lamb. We enforce the rule of law. Um, you know, we're. I think that uh, we, they, it showcases the beauty of this county and, and the state of Arizona. Um, I don't see. I mean, we haven't really seen any downsides to it, and uh, we look forward to continuing it. And the women tell me, I've been. I want to drive and speed through Pinal County just so Frank will pull me over.
which is like in theory it's good until I come up to your car with a ticket. And then they're, and like, then they're like, wait a wait second, a second. That didn't play out how I thought it was going to play out. <laughs> so that's happened a couple times. They're like, I, I wanted to get pulled over by you. I don't think you don't understand what my job is, but I issue citations to change dangerous driving behavior. And you're driving dangerously, so I'm going to issue the, you this citation. And, uh, and for the record, I issue warnings. I'm a warning guy. Yeah. We, we are the that's yin terrible. and yang of traffic. That's terrible. Course. Hello. Well, good morning. How are you doing? I'm just fine. How nice you Good, is. good. I'm Sheriff Lamb. I know who you are. <laughs> we stopped you because your your plates or your tags are expired. They expired in April. Let me just double check everything and I'll get back to you, okay? okay. So Frank's going to run her. Um, She's not getting a ticket. We're going to get her a warning. Probably wouldn't have got a warning, but I'm here. So we're going to get Absolutely her a warning, not. let her know she's got to redo, do her plates, and uh, we'll get her on her way. Like over four months expired. Like... Uh, the, it's very ah. frustrating, but I think a, I think a warning from the boss goes a long way. Like, you know, Frank's Frank, but you got the boss with you. The boss gives you a warning. I just I just told him if it wasn't for the fact that I was here, it probably wouldn't be going this way. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent, absolutely. Hey, just so you know, she was uh, last issued a ticket in Pinal County in 2010. Oh man, that's a long time that's ago. That's a long so time ago. She's so doing pretty she's, good. She's earned this. Okay. Our records in Spillman go back all the way into the 90s. So I've seen people with with histories all the way back into the mid 90s. Um, so this, going back to 2010 is, is definitely a ways, but we have records within the Sheriff's Office of, of contacts with us that go back even further. Okay. Reluctantly. It's your lucky day today. I'm gonna give you a warning, all right? Luckily you got me, I give warnings, so. I don't. Uh, make sure you get it taken care of.